It's that time of week, Matthias. It's time again. We're back. They're back. Everyone's back. <laughs> Everyone's back. It's the cool place to be. Finally. <laughs> exactly, finally. I've always Th- been looking for the cool place to be. I'm glad I found it. Yeah, you've, yeah, I know. Somewhere. I have often said, wherever Matthias is, that's where the party's at. <laughs> and, uh, half truth. Half, well, I don't know. I like, to, I like to think it's true. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We're back. We're back for our third installment. Third installment. And it's our uh, final installment, I, I can also report, uh, for our Reason 10 live streams. We yep. love doing them with you. We love you guys joining. I'm watching everybody kind of jump in here on the comments. I'm seeing a live comments update, which is a handy thing to have happen. Pretty smart. Um, Darnell, uh, if, if someone here, I wonder if anyone can... Um, help darnell by commenting uh, darnell triple d doesn't have sound he's got to turn the sound on uh i made a graphic on the first live stream that was a fantastic graphic i don't have that graphic anymore uh but it's someone made can, with uh, things like pens and paper <laughs> yes high tech my fantastic uh drawing but anyway let's um let's actually get ahead uh, and get started here so the uh the first two live streams people have been joining in and taking a look at uh what to a to a synth geek might be the the headline instruments in reason 10 right yeah one might say that one definitely. one might say now i don't know i'm going to make a little bit of an american reference here but um <laughs> it, the theme song to gilligan's island as a kid okay i don't know if people know the tv show gilligan's island but in you the lost theme- me already <laughs> oh man all right this uh, the, americans this is for you only the theme song to gilligan's island used to run through all the characters you know the professor marianne and i don't know you know uh, it would do them all. And then it got to the end. There was only two more characters. And the song theme song went, and the rest. <laughs> and I always thought, what? And the, just name them. It takes as much time to name them as it does to say, and the rest. So in a way, this stream is, and the rest. <laughs> We're going to be looking at all the other things that are in Reason 10 yeah. that, that a synth geek might think is below the headline. But we uh, will ha- hope, hopefully have you understanding how cool these new instruments are in reason these new loop content and how cool it is to have radical piano and synchronous in in reason 10 as well yep. so that's kind of the agenda we're going to kind of look at all that stuff today exactly uh and maybe uh there's no time like the present to get going with i think so and the rest and the rest <laughs> <laughs> gonna get me singing that all day now that's right <laughs> so uh so matthias why don't you uh take the lead here in kind of showing us stuff but i guess the the right place to start is with the new uh what what we're calling the organic instruments yeah exactly in in reason 10 yeah so really the thought behind that was that reason's always been known for having a lot of really good sounds out of the box and this content update if you want to call it that we're calling it that because it's all about the content and we're getting new synths we're getting new awesome stuff i wanted to make sure that you also got some some real instrument, some actual sampled instrument that sounded great that you could use in really any type of music, kind of as a spice, where you know you want to add that one imperfect element that sounds real, that sounds you know close, and that's why we came up with these three devices in collaboration with the Sound Iron. This is actually this is a, there's a certain philosophy that predates these three instruments mm. in that in music production. We have this wonderful, perfect world, this in-the-box world where we can generate a sine wave more pure than any sine wave you you could generate outside the box, right? We can record audio in this super high-fidelity, pristine sound. And so what ends up happening and what we've done in previous versions of Reason is we've actually tried to add some of the imperfect. Yeah, exactly. So if you look at devices like Audiomatic, mm. that's all about coloring perfection to make it less perfect because less perfect is actually more human. Yeah, yeah. Right? in fact, in a lot of the uh, Europa uh, modifiers and stuff, there are some that just actually adds imperfections to the waveforms mm. for that same reason, that sometimes you just don't want pristine and clean. You want something with character. Right, right. And, and the same was true with devices like Pulverizer. Exactly. Right? You've got this... You know, the knob is called dirt. You you dial up the dirt on yeah. your sound, you know? And and a little bit is just that little bit of kind of seasoning that can, can make something. So but so this takes that same philosophy of giving you some of that natural imperfection. Exactly. So we we have three devices, actually. Uh the reason is to kind of have three easy ways to get to the sounds. Right, So they're always available in your instrument palette and you can just drag them in and choose something you want to play. Uh, 
We made this in collaboration with Soundiron and Nucleus Sound Lab helped develop them. And I think they turned out really great. So I just want to start showing you how they sound. Yeah, let's let's do that. Okay, I'm gonna start off by loading in the first of the three, Clang. Andre uh, uh, Lemieux, I'm gonna totally butcher this. <laughs> I think French name. He says he needs more kalimba and and bells in his life. So good, you're gonna be so happy. <laughs> so Clang is all about yes bell-like stuff. It's about mallets. It's about tuned percussion. It's called clang tuned percussion. So as the name implies, that's what you're getting. It's actually quite a basic device. You can do a lot more than you think with it, but the point was to keep it simple. That you load up a sound, it sounds great, you can switch the sound, that also sounds great, right? So I'm just going to play the initialized patch here, which is uh, circle bells, a kind of a metal, uh, almost cone-like bells. It metal metal really not nice. in the uh, docking sense of the word. <laughs> exactly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just uh, give it a quick play. Sound really nice. Yeah, just really kind of simple. Yeah, exactly. Like and they, they definitely. There's, I say simple, but there's like all these layers. If you were to say like, "Oh, I'm gonna make that sound with a parsec or something," yeah, right. right. You you end up in this world of modifiers and, yeah, and trying it, to it's tricky physically <laughs> emulate yeah. these things. And and there it's just it's that perfect sound with all those layers of complexity, those overtones yeah. that aren't quite right. But exactly. So what I like about this is that they're really well sampled and they're quite unique instruments. That's why we chose them. So these are things you won't find in you know, your average collection of instruments. And that's what makes it kind of fun. So I'm going to load up another patch just to show you what else. And now I'm using patches just to show you something different. So speaking of kalimba, here's the kalimba natural patch. To people who don't know, kalimba is a... It's an African thumb piano. Thumb a, piano, yeah. Yeah, it's it's like these little tines or tongs or something. Exactly, you kind of plug it. On a it. gourd, right? Yeah, it's a gourd or even it can be done with tin cans. Oh, cool. It's really cool. And it has this kind of imperfect, you can hear all the kind of weird resonancy stuff. Now, this is actually really funny to me. So when I was a kid, my mom had a kalimba. Yeah. And what I just heard there, you hit a high velocity. Yeah, exactly. There was a thing with it that I used to find funny. Is if you really press down on your thumb... It made that like sprongy noise. Yeah, going. Yeah, going. <laughs> yeah, that. I'm reliving my childhood. <laughs> exactly. But then if you play it softly. It's much nicer. Now, I can't help but notice we've kind of in an organic way, we've we've started off in Plucktown. <laughs> Right? This time we started off in Plucktown. We started we off normally. Go there. We don't even have to go to Plucktown. It's first stop. <laughs> We're just there. Plucktown, but organic Plucktown. Yeah, it's a different and that's world. Actually, one of the good things about Clang is that you get these kind of plucky sounds, and they're really good in electronic music because you can have these more organic plucks and play these kind of EDM chords and really do that. So let's load up just some wine glasses, which is uh, maybe not a thing you associate with EDM. But it, it works really well, especially if you add, say, a player. So I'm just going to add uh, scales and chords to this real quick. And load up a patch on scales and chords. Mike Donaldson is very excited to have a new collection of organic sounds. Good. So are Happy we, Mike. <laughs> and I have a lot of release here, so I'm going to turn it down a bit so it doesn't ring out quite as long. You can hear it's a bit out of tune and I love that character that you're getting these kind of sounds that are not perfect and pristine right and you can try this with a bunch of sounds so if you don't want to load patches these all come with a, a lot of device patches that you can check out Nico nails it here he says it's dope for tropical house beats and that's oh, true yeah. that I mean that whole style of you know I mean it's house music but it's got that thing to it yeah exactly know? that island vibe yeah so <laughs> speaking of i'm gonna just choose a different instrument not by choosing a patch so you can select from the list of instruments right here here we go and i'm gonna go with a bamblong you go what the heck is a bamblong and these are kind of wooden tubes that you hit with mallets and they also have a really really nice sound <laughs> I 
mean, that's that's got an EDM vibe to it. Yeah, exactly. Even Which I'm I, sure the inventor of the um, Bamblong did not... <laughs> did not plan. No. <laughs> Uh, all of these devices also have some effects and amp and filter built in. So if I want to just spice this up quickly from this quite normal sound, I can add a bit of reverb. It's a nice long reverb actually. Mm. Just keeps on going forever. Wow, that really does go for a while. Yeah, it goes for a while. It's just having a bit of this. It's funny, I, I start, you know, the the production-minded part of me starts going, oh, right, right, okay, and then you, you put that on the drop, and then you, you sidechain that reverb, yeah, and yeah. So, you know? You start yeah. getting ideas. Yeah, yeah. So these effects, they really just make sure that you quickly can get the sound to, you know, sound a bit shinier, sound a bit more production-ready. We also have a delay, pretty basic delay with the ping pong. It also has some damping, meaning hmm. the feedback it goes through a filter, so it gets a bit uh, more muddy every time. Right. Let me, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, Mirko yeah. asked a question in the comments that I think is a fair question. Mm -hmm. He says, why not just release these as refills? And there are reasons for that. Yeah, absolutely. So, so go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, a couple of reasons. And I think one of the most important ones is just the ease of use that this brings. So you have these collections of different instruments. And these are optional installs with Recent 10, actually. So when you get Recent 10, there are a couple of things that you can choose if you want to install or not. That include Radical Piano, Clang, Pangea, and Humana. And it also includes the two new drum refills. So just letting people choose that and then having them ready in the device section where you actually grab your instruments. I think that's a really important thing, actually. From a workflow so, standpoint, so it's important. There's another thing that, that I think is interesting, and people have asked this uh, similarly of... Things like Radical Piano. There might mm. be people that have, have Radical Piano. Right. You know, so what is it to them that Radical Piano is in Reason 10 if you've already got it? Mm. The answer is that native devices in Reason, devices that are guaranteed to be in someone who owns that version of Reason, become fair game to sound designers, uh, refill patch developers, and exactly. the community at large. If everybody knows that we all have Radical Piano and Clang and Pinchy and Humana, and it's not a refill that you have to buy into mm. then patch makers can make combinators and make various things exactly that include those yeah yeah it's we, a known we've, quantity we've tried a lot of patches actually just layering a clang sound with the europa and adding a thor pad underneath an organ and it really it, it's kind of you feel secure that everyone else on recent 10 also has these if you want to send them some patches it's safe if you want to send a song it's safe and i think that's one of the really important parts yeah yeah. Okay. So anyway, um, there was another request uh, someone had asked. Maybe I, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit here, <gasps> but they were hoping to hear, well, originally Kalimba, but maybe we start here and go back to the Kalimba for a second. Mm -hmm. They wanted to hear arpeggiators on these. Oh, yeah, sure. So let's load up a dual arp. And I'll just use the basic patch for now. I'm just going to place a couple of chords on the same <laughs> Sorry, sound. Fabian, uh, was it Fabian? Wait, um, this, no, uh, Jeff Hackworth um, mm. is complimenting you on two umlauts in your name. He says, nicely played, bro. Thank you. I do what I can. <laughs> so here's some arpeggiated bamblon. Yeah, I, I just love, I mean, I just can't get over, the, like, how it's so EDM, yet, like, it's... Yeah, kind of, exactly, it's But just it's just between. got that little different thing, you know? Yeah. Where if you were doing that just with, like, a a, a square wave or triangle wave where you mm. cut the, uh, the release and the decay way down, it's not the same. It's not the same. So it works really well with arpeggiators and scales and chords. I think that's one of the strengths of these types of sounds in Clang. Uh, let's just try one... Other one quickly, let's do the Noah Bells. It's another type of metallic bell that uh, without the arpeggiator sounds like this. So quite a lot of resonance from that. It uh, sounds like it's quite thin, the metal. Yeah, right. A lot of a lot of sustain and not a lot of, I guess, yeah, the metal itself would yeah, be kind of a exactly. thin metal. Yeah. So if you turn on the arpeggiator. Oops. On, not hold. <laughs> Close. And 
and especially with a simple arpeggio. If anybody has been a tourist in any city, any major city over the last 10 years, you've probably seen these people have these like hang drum yeah, exactly. and looper pedals. This is very similar. <laughs> it's set up as buskers. Yeah. It's got that kind of vibe to it. Yeah. 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 So that's clang strength is in those kind of sounds. Yeah. But that's not the only device. So let's check out the second now, device. Can we? If, hang, if there are questions, yes. Well, <laughs> I, I, I want to be fair to the original question was they actually wanted to hear kalimba with an arpeggiator, which ah, is probably it. weird. <laughs> it's probably a bit strange, but, but let's but try it out. We'll give the people what they want. That's why we're here. So kalimba with an arpeggiator. Hmm. It's kind of a neat thing. It actually worked out better than I thought. Yeah, see? Pretty good. Cool. Let's just try this pattern too while we're here. You get those kind of double thumb. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's which neat. was hard to do when you were a kid. I had a kalimba too, and you had to kind of... <laughs> Ah, it was I, I used to get like calluses on the yeah, tip exactly. of my thumb from kalimba yeah. thumb <laughs> yeah, kalimba thumb totally <laughs> yeah. I heard about like guitar fingers but kalimba thumb kalimba that, thumb it was who thing. knew <laughs> hippie parents were uh, giving us kalimba thumb <laughs> exactly <laughs> so the second collection of instruments it's called Pangea and Pangea is a collection of what you normally call maybe world instruments what that really means in this case is it's a lot of traditional instruments and strange instruments that are not, you know, in the in the common collection of instruments that you might know. It's not in every school, it's not in every country, it's stuff you'll find when you really look around. And these are some of the most unique, I think, that we have. So let's check a couple of patches out. Okay. And let's start with something quite normal still. So everyone knows a piano. This is a piano, except you're not playing it like a piano. You're actually striking the strings inside of the piano uh, you know i i've learned from my brother's a composer mm. there's a name for this um in the hoity-toity composer world prepared piano prepared piano see you're a composer too you, yes. you know these things <laughs> i read musicology yeah <laughs> it's and, called prepared piano and it's, it means basically playing a piano in any way other than exactly. the mel bay book one of piano. Yeah. and this actually creates a really cool sound you can hear that it's a piano but it sounds very different too so i'll just play something real quick Now, in terms of the physicality, it's it's sort of the same concept as a uh, harpsichord, but yeah, exactly. very it different. Quite similar. It's it's got the similar kind of that that pick attack thing yeah. you get on a harpsichord, but because the body of the piano is so much bigger and the range is so much bigger and yeah. all that stuff, you get, it's a very different sound. But it's sort of the same like initial concept. Exactly, and it gets quite bass heavy at the bottom. That's a really nice sound, I think. Mm. Uh, but it's one of the more normal ones. There are also some. We're, maybe we're, we're less getting requests while we're still on this one for mm -hmm. a prepared piano with Philip Glass Arp, please. <laughs> Is that something you can just sort of stump the band real quick and do? Uh, okay. Do I know Philip Glass well enough? I think so. Guys, this is why Matthias is the best. You just throw something at him like that, and he will he pulls it out first try. I'm going to play that all day now. Yeah, I'll be humming it on the way home. <laughs> so let's uh, try another one, and this is maybe something more strange. So let's try the acoustic saz with a Z at the end. And this is a, a lute-like instrument, but it has quite a character. And it's uh, one of those instruments that if you want to play it correctly, then you have to work for it a bit. So... With any guitar, it has a set number of strings. So right here I have the release set up quite a bit. So if I play... You can hear they all ring out. Mm. But in reality, if you want to play a guitar, then some of the strings you can't ring out at the same time because you want to take a new note on that string, right? So then you actually have to... play it properly. So that's damping 
Yeah, exactly. It's, just removing the finger when you take the next note. But what I like, this is just an example of why we like computer music to begin with, right? You don't have to play it like you're supposed to play it. Right. And I think that's one of the strengths of all these instruments, that you can take something that's supposed to be a lute where you play a very specific style of music, you can play something completely different. And it's, you know, still really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Bratu uh, comments that he was about to get a, a VST that does SAS. Mm. And uh, he said, well, well okay, I'll, yeah, I got it. Yeah, definitely check this one out. Yeah. It also has, again, quite a different sound where you go up and down uh, the scales. Quite low rumbly. I, nice. See, I love that. Yeah, I, I get a kick out of those high velocity where you, you hear the frets. Yeah, it's buzzing on the exactly. frets. Yeah, yeah, the string is kind of going against... <laughs> quite nice uh, let's try something else this also has a bunch of organs actually in, in different categories if you want a normal big old pipe organ there's one really nice here that's uh, well I'll let you hear it it sounds big I'm going to turn this up slightly ooh Now, to through the wonders of uh, Facebook's mono streaming, yeah. people probably aren't appreciating uh, a lot of the sort of convolution ah, that's true. You're right. vibe yeah. that's in there. But um, as as always, our handy dandy trusty uh, archive recorder is recording this stream in stereo, and it'll go up on YouTube afterwards. Yeah. So yeah, so this um, pipe organ obviously it's sampled in the room it's in. Pipe organs are built in to rooms, right? So that's a part of the character that's really important. But you also have some. Maybe less normal organs. So this is a traveler organ, which is kind of a small pumped organ that I think is really nice. A lot of character. I have to tell you, uh, when, I, when I first tried out this one, the first thing I did just from, you know, having been in meditation retreats and yoga classes, stuff like that, is I hit a, f a fifth, just a power chord fifth, real low for a long time, and I was singing mantras over it, and it sounded just <laughs> like, like it does when you're in those things, you know? Yeah, now we just hold that for like 10 minutes. <laughs> you, you can zone out, guys. <laughs> yeah, okay, now everyone take a deep breath. Forget your troubles now. Um, <laughs> so this, but it sounds it's a really good sounding yeah. pump organ. And Pangea is filled with this stuff. Let's uh, check out one more, the Citret. And I'm loading up the natural patches now, and I'll show you why I'm only loading up those. Those, as the name might imply, sound natural, but we also have some other patches. I'll show you later. So a Citret is a small uh, struck string instrument where all the strings have a pitch, and you strike it with small mallets. Now, Matthias, I, I'm, I'm not actually expecting you to do this, but, but you're getting a request to play a Bach fugue. I think now they're just, some people are throwing, <laughs> I know yeah, they're just like, oh, this guy, well, he'll play anything. Yeah. Ah, if you can't ask anyone to imitate Bach, that's, no. that's too much. No, no. <laughs> so this is also one of those really nice kind of percussive sounds that I, I think are really useful in a lot of music, just to kind of get something in the background. That kind of beat in any pop song, I think is really great. So that's uh, Pangea. There are a bunch more instruments that you can check out. Uh, but we do have a lot to cover in this stream. So let's move on to the next one. Okay. So next up is Humana. And this, these are vocal sounds, but primarily it does choirs. It does choirs really well. And choirs is one of those things that you mentioned your brother did soundtracks. Right. I've also worked with video game soundtracks. And having just a good choir in the bottom of a track, just kind of in the background, it adds so much. Mm. That's so much of a kind of a human flair. And I think that's part of why this is here. Because even in pop music, just having a choir underneath your chorus, it can add so much. Oh, absolutely. So let's check out the first patch here, which is called Mercury. It's 
really nice to have in the background. That's a children's choir, actually, which is something you don't always get in those choir packs. Right, right. Yeah, it sounds cool. Yeah. Which, you know, there is actually a an element uh, in pop music, in the history of, of pop music, children's choirs have been something that actually get employed quite often. I mean, if you yeah. think about, you know, the uh, Pink Floyd's use of it, uh, Rolling Stones used it, you know, there's a lot of examples where yeah. it's got a special sound. Absolutely. So let's check out another patch and let's go with uh, Mars. And Mars, as the name might imply, is a men's choir. So this is... Uh, quite a bit more powerful. You can hear the bass frequencies are quite a bit different from the children's choir. Yeah. It's really nice and soft. Yeah, and now I'm playing them live, right? So if you sequence them, you'll get the exact tightness you want. I, I have to but say, I, I, I'm impressed with your ability to be a, a choir... A choir leading. <laughs> yeah, yeah, doing all the little, like, you know, suspensions and stuff. And, yeah, it's Tricky stuff. Yeah, it sounds uh, good. There are also other male choirs, so there's an ah as well. And this one has a bit more power. The ooh is soft and kind of it's backgroundy sound. Ah is... Quite direct. Mm. Billy Reynolds says that Mars Ah uh, sounds like a, a Buddhist monk if you hold a low C. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing to know. All right. All of we, you know, we'll pair that with my pump organ, yeah, and sick. Billy and I can really go to town <laughs> on our uh, meditation CD. It's worth mentioning that, actually, that all of these instruments, they have a good range where they're sampled, but we didn't want to you know, leave you out of experimentation, so you can play outside those, those ranges, and it will sound sometimes wonderful, sometimes really weird when you go to, like, no, C minus three, and it actually stops at C1. You can get really weird effects, but we didn't want to rob you of that experience. Right. <laughs> so let's try out some women's choirs. We have uh, the Venus. Ooh. And I'm going to load this up with some delay and reverb on, so you can hear it kind of in effect. We can pair that with the Philip Glass. Yep. It's really nice. Really nice. Yeah, and you know, uh, some people in the comments are starting to, you know, some of the, the light bulbs are starting to go off. And, you know, through the power of the combinator, you start putting these into exactly. combinators in combinations yeah. and doing key splits and stuff and you end up with you know female in the top range male choirs in the in the in the low range and a combination exactly. of oohs and ahs i mean there's yeah. a lot you can do with that you can set up a whole choir section maybe a solo vocal at the top it's it's quite flexible that way yeah um and speaking of combinators i just want to give you an example of what you could do with a combinator so this is just something we put together a couple of patches for fun we might post them on the blog later uh, but these are just you know, what happens if I combine all of these? So here's one called Old Metal Mallets. And this one is combining Clang and Pangea. So you're getting both the wine glass and the cigarette with some reverb and distortion. Here, that distortion really adds a lot, especially with the high velocities. Yeah, so you can get these really cinematic sounds by just combining things. We have a couple of more that I can show. Here's one called Forgotten Planet, and this one uses quite a bit here. It uses a pulsar, an organ, a sass, and a choir all in one. And this is kind of really a soundtrack thing. Play one note, and you go like, oh, movie. <laughs> So, what is that sustain coming from? It's it, it's a, got a synth vibe to it, but it's not. It's uh, the pulverizer, actually. Ah. It's some audio rate modulation of, uh, I think, the filter. 
And it crunches up. It's really cool. The choir comes up. Way in the background. Oh, yeah, the, the voices come up in the background. Exactly. Really beautiful. Yeah. I've got some friends that um, refer to sounds like this. Um, they used to listen to Pink Floyd, and they, they said they were entering the Floyd void, <laughs> where they would just put on headphones and, like, space out on it. Yeah. And sounds like this, then, they would refer to as, like, oh, man, it's Floyd void. You just put it on and kind of vibe on it. Yeah, and that gives you an idea of what you can do with the combinator. It's also an example that I think is just fun, because it does two very different things. It's called choir gate, and it's uh, two humanas, but there's also an alligator in there. And what it does, it uses one of the staccato samples that's uh, just the attack of the song. The actual ah, and then it goes away. But the actual ah, the sustain, is in the alligator. So you get an attack, and then you get this pattern. Mm. You can do these kinds of effects when you really load them up and try different things. And yeah. yeah, pretty cool. That's neat. Now Yuka has said today I learned Matthias has Sasquatch hands. Is that true? I would I wouldn't I have. No, uh-huh. they're they're not that hairy. <laughs> no, 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 as far as I can see, at least. <laughs> Maybe you knew something, something I don't. And who knows? <laughs> uh, so those three devices, they're all great, and I think you'll really learn to like them when you combine them with things. They're right. great on their own. In fact, I want to show you one more thing, because on the panel, I mentioned, yes, there's a filter, there's an amp with envelope delay and reverb. Just to show you what you can actually do with these, I set up a patch that's included that's a kalimba resonator. And you might go, what do you mean resonator? Well, this is using a comb filter to get a weird resonance thing from every kalimba note. So you get quite a different sound from what you heard before. Not quite your average kalimba. No, this, you know, my my mom's kalimba never sounded like that, no matter how hard I twanged it. You really tried. (laughs) (laughs) And there's a bunch of these patches where you have things uh, like they're more synthetic or they're a pad or they're more percussive. There's a bunch of those patches included. And you can, of course, create tons of your own. So I think you really like this. And I mean, I've been using Reason 10 for a while to make music. Not to make you jealous or anything, but we have to test it. And I find that these devices, they sneak into songs where you don't think, oh, I could never use like kalimba here or I could never use a wine glass in this song. But it, it works. Right. It just works when you edit. That's cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> someone's quoted in the comments, my mom's kalimba. My I don't, mom's kalimba. It's disturbing to see that quoted back in just that phrase. I don't know what they... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so, okay. Well, so that that's kind of a... a a good primer on the three instruments or the three sound iron collab instruments in yep. Reason Tim. But but there's more. But there's more. <laughs> but wait. Um, and so one of those is something that uh, I've been surprised um, how to people who know it, it's a familiar friend. And to those who haven't gotten into it before, it's a whole new concept. And that's Radical Piano. Yep. So I wonder if we could talk a little bit about Radical Piano um, and and kind of cover some of the, a little bit of the introduction ground for people that may not know it. Right. So, Radical Piano is actually quite special. Yes, it's a sampled piano. That's the basis of it. But we go a bit further than that. So, it's a sampled piano that also uses physical modeling technology. And that sounds like a whole bunch of tech mumbo jumbo. But what it means is that we're simulating parts of the piano. We're simulating parts so you can do stuff that you couldn't do to just samples. And... It actually leads to quite a few cool use cases that I think we can show. Use as such a software designer. Word. I know use a cases. lot of cool music, cool musical opportunities, <laughs> cool songs, cool things. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, you know, when I first got to start playing with Radical Piano, uh, the first night that I got it, I was up until I don't know what hour of the night, putting on some of my favorite songs that had piano recordings in it, 
and sculpting radical piano to achieve those sounds mm. you know and and a full range of things you know you i'd put on an adele song and get that beautiful grand kind of wide yeah, thing yeah. and then i'd put on like a song by the police or uh, or imagine by john lennon which is like this weird pseudo lo-fi thing you know and and it was just so fun to kind of explore the yeah. breadth of sounds that are in it exactly there's tons to do so let's quickly go through the basics so someone who hasn't seen this before can check it out and in case it wasn't clear Yes, this is included in Reason 10 for everyone, which means that you can always send someone a song with Radical Piano and they'll have it, which is great. So, really the center is the center. This is where the sample starts. So there are three sample pianos, uh, a home grand, which if I'm not mistaken is actually Pelle's home grand, oh. our DSP developer that he sampled at home. So the Lux grand and a normal upright piano. You can choose from various mics here. And you can mix between those mics. You can actually take two different pianos and mix between them. But here we just have a deluxe grand that's close mic'd and jazz mic'd, which is a special way how you mic pianos. I'll just play real quick and you can hear some nice piano. Right? Yep. Just good old... Good old-fashioned piano. Good old-fashioned uh, workhorse piano. Now, but what I like about this is that you can take that as a starting point, and if you want to add some extra character, um, you can you can start with a patch like that or, mm. or a sort of starting spot, and you can go in and actually kind of go, let's actually, you know, to, uh, this theme of, of imperfection sometimes being the, the preferred thing. Exactly. You can actually say, what if I was picking up more of the the pedal noise or what if i was picking right. up more of the 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 release of the key you know mm. things that you can get on sometimes not well maintained pianos but it sounds cool yeah so down below that section i just showed that's where we have things like mechanics and mechanics it's pretty much the mechanics of the piano that you hear so how much does it sound when i press down a key on my keyboard how much does it sound when i let go of a key and how much does it sound when i actually hit my sustain pedal so just to show you this, I'm going to really go over the top. You don't want to do this for any reason, but let's take them to the max level. And I'm just going to softly play a key. Crank that up. Can people hear that? Let's get the volume up. So when Matthias is releasing his key, you'll hear this little... Right now, that is that is, is that's way too much. But, but it's the, it's an element of realism that uh, when exactly. you dial it in, it creates really nice. And it, it's a thing when you actually take it away, you realize that's a lot of how a piano sounds. It sounds empty. Yeah, it's almost too clean, right? Too clean, yeah. So I like to have it's them like kind Casio of almost at fifty percent. Now, uh, someone was asking in the comments, it's, it's scrolled by now, so I can't see who it was. They were asking about the sustain pedal in terms of its behavior. Is it on-off or is it continuous? Aha, uh -huh. uh, the sustain pedal is like all the sustain pedals in recent. So it's... Uh, actually, let's try it out. Well, your pedal... So hang on, your pedal is a non-continuous pedal. Yeah. So this is a it's a two-part answer. So yeah, the, exactly. The answer is is radical piano does it support continuous sustain? Yes. Yes. You can see this meter actually on the screen that that is under sustain. You can actually turn it up manually. You can see oh here it's 51. So that would so so for people let's, let's try and just give a little context for people that may not be following this. Real pianos with real sustain pedals as you push down the pedal you're pushing felt onto strings right and you can push that softly so you just kind of dampen them mm. or you can push it all the way so you totally dampen it and uh, in the same way this this mimics that behavior if you have a pedal that does continuous mm. sustain um a lot of pedals you know the, the kind that matthias is using today is is a binary pedal in the pedal itself yeah it's one or zero right 
So, um, so with the right pedal, yes, you have continuous sustain. Exactly. And if you don't, and what I've actually done sometimes is like, I don't have a pedal with continuous sustain, but sometimes I go, well, I'll just automate it and I'll get some of those in between yeah, states. Yeah, and you can send it to your mod wheel or something. Yeah, like yeah. There's, there's ways to access that without yeah. the, the special pedal. Yeah. Another really cool part about getting kind of the character of the piano is the resonance. And you might think resonance, oh, like in a filter, and not quite. This is actually the sound of sound in the piano, if that <laughs> makes sense. And you'll hear what I mean if I just turn this up and turn up the release. You'll hear when I release my note, you will hear a lot of piano, even though I'm not playing the note. Yeah. There's a lot of piano going on. It's almost like a reverb, right? It's the reverb of the piano. Yeah, it's the exactly right. And that's also something, this is an enormous setting to just max everything. Sure. But you can add quite a bit of character just by having it a bit over the normal. That's what makes this sound kind of reverby because it just captures that piano body. Absolutely. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, I, I remember... Uh, when I was a, a kid, the first time I'd be around pianos and stuff, that was the thing you did. You shout into the piano and yeah. you hear your your voice. You know? Exactly. And <laughs> actually, in radical piano, you can do that because we have an audio input on the back that goes into the resonance section. So if you plug a microphone in to an audio jack, plug it in here, you can actually scream into the piano. <laughs> <laughs> right. And one of the reasons you would want to do this, if you're recording like a piano and singer duet, and it's supposed to sound like they're in the same room then actually the singer, he or he does resonate the strings when they sing. Right. And this simulates that. So you can get that same sound and it sounds super realistic. Right. And that's also true. I mean, there's, uh, you know, if you're, if you're recording a band in a live situation and you've got a piano and you've got the amps nearby, yeah. they'll resonate the piano. Exactly. You know? And so you can get some of that as well. You yeah. know, even if you're taking the soft tube amps, routing them right. into Radical Piano, you're creating this real organic space in, in the virtual world. Yeah. In fact, I've used it as a send reverb on a bunch of channels, mm. which uh, is quite cool, actually. Uh, <laughs> Some people are saying, scream into the piano, if only we could. <laughs> if only we could. <laughs> um, one final thing that I want to show, because it's just so strange, in a way, is that you can now change character of a piano. And you mean, what do you mean character? Well, this is the physical modeling part. This is where you can actually change almost the shape of the piano and how the strings work and stuff like that. So the normal piano patch, yes, it sounds like a piano. Let's see what happens if we bring it up to be more agitated. Here it's getting a bit brighter. Let's really go over the top. This is your, uh, your Elton John rock piano. Yeah. That <laughs> if you yeah. go the other way you're kind of dampen dampening it a bit and here you can get really kind of soft characterful pianos even if you're playing quite hard yeah I love going this direction yeah it's my favorite one too you get these ambient kind of piano pads now Yuka was asking in the comments she said wait what you can you can input a resonance source into Radical Piano, and yes, hope maybe you maybe you made that comment before we talked a little bit more about it. But yes, that's you're exactly right. Yep. You can import input a resonance source and and create that resonance. Yeah. But anyway, yes, natural. When we ba you back off natural and you go back to that subdued, mm. and um, I really it just makes everything yeah. kind of even at super low settings like here, you get this weird sound. Okay, it's getting kind of it's getting away from being a piano. You can hear it's there. It's like it needs new strings, but in a good way. <laughs> it's quite cool. And with this in mind, you can make so many different variations on the piano. And there are tons and tons of included patches. And there's a reason there's a folder called Natural Pianos, Production Pianos, and Radical Pianos. And those are the ones that just go way over the top. So just to show you kind of one example of how far you can go. Let's try a patch here. Um, Mike McHugh says Radiohead. I think that's he's re referencing that subdued piano. It, it, I think he's referencing that I was playing a Radiohead song. Oh, were you? Oh my God, I spaced <laughs> on even that. Thank you. Yes, this is well, good ear, Mike. Piano Sither. This is what happens if you use the envelope and the mechanics and actually bring up the agitated character. Mm -hmm. 
this is sort of a could have been in Clang or Pangea. I was going to say you could make a combinator with this and Pangea. And yeah, exactly. You get some really cool stuff. Let's just try one more because I really like these patches. This is Perfume Garden. Yeah. You can hear it's drifting around. It sounds really distant. And the, the pitch is not static. Yeah, that's not your stream going weird. That's Exactly. That's just how it sounds. That's how it sounds. You can get really cool sounds with this that aren't pianos at all. Right. Yeah, I, lo I love this one. I mean, I, uh, you know, I've probably spent more sound design time personally with Radical Piano than I have with some of the synths in Reason, which is sort of the thing you tend to think about, like, oh, I'm going to get all into sound design and yeah, get tweaky. Right, right. But I just love it. I love that it, it's one of those instruments that the more you put into it, the more you get out of it in terms of all these useful exactly. characters. Yeah. So uh, I think we should maybe take a quick look into the new drum refills. Let's do. And uh, I think you'll like one thing in particular here. So the new refills are uh, made in collaboration with Sample Magic. And they're split up into drum supply and loop supply. So if you just want the one shot, that's fine. You can just grab that from the optional contents. Um, you would expect this, right? Folders with the actual things you want. What really you might not expect is just sheer number of samples. Mm. And this is something I think is important because reason, again, we have a lot of great content. But the samples, it was a while since we updated those. We really wanted to give you just an injection of a lot of modern kind of production-ready drum sounds. So just looking into the bass drum folder, you'll see it's quite long. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's really long. I'm going to scroll for a while. Keep, just keep scrolling. Yeah, it just keeps going. Yep. And... Oh, the end, where are you? There we go. That's all the bass drum sounds. <laughs> That's a lot of bass drum sounds. And this is when, just... When I was making the uh, the announcement video for Reason yeah. 10, I had this idea that I was going to show all... The, you know, I said something in it like, your new bass kick drum got a few hundred competitors or something. There's yeah. some line I had in there, right? I was like, oh, I'll show them all. And then I looked at them, I was like, oh, I can't show I can't them all. Show and them not all. only... Not, not just because there isn't enough time in my life to show them all and do the, the video work, but I was like, by the time I actually zoomed out a video screen to show all these things, it would just be little dots. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And... and the really cool part here is, 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 yes, there's a lot, but you'll quickly find favorites. You can add them to favorite lists. You can search for genres you want. You can search for, you know, old drum machines. If you search for a, you know, 727, then yeah, you're going to find some stuff. Right. Now, Garrett's got a question. Garrett uh, Richardson asks, is it going to increase my loading time? Uh, you mean loading? It depends on what you mean with the question. Loading up recent, starting recent? No. No. No, it's not different from having a couple of refills. But even even if you took it to mean... Is it going to increase my loading time in terms of loading a song? Oh, yeah. Drum samples, oh. they're, they're notoriously small. Yeah. That's why there are so many of them. <laughs> right. So if you use, you know, a couple of drum kits, it will hardly affect you at all. Right. So, Garrett, I think the answer is, however you slice it, uh, not really, no. No. <laughs> uh, this, of course, also includes a bunch of Kong patches. And this is using a beta build. So we're not actually quite finished with this Kong patches folder, but it's a lot of different genres. And there are kits for a bunch of the sounds, not all of them, but a bunch of them. So you can get the inspiration and you can go in and maybe exchange the kick, exchange the snare, you know, do something like that. And that's a good starting point. And I think the easiest way to show you this is probably that we should, instead of listening to samples, <laughs> <laughs> which can be, can be quite dull, we should maybe start making some music instead. All right. So I, I have an idea. I've cheated and I've started to have an idea. Just I don't. I don't know if it's, hours. you're gonna you're gonna attempt to make some music live on air. I don't think being remotely slightly prepared. Is, I'm not really <laughs> cheating. I mean, I think it's kind of cheating. Don't know. Uh, so I really w I want to use some of the stuff I've shown you. So I'm gonna use the Clang Bamblong combo that I showed you before, and just use that as kind of the basis of the track. Uh, and let's set this to maybe yeah, let's 120. That's always fine. And I'll just record something real quick, and then we'll start adding drums to this. Okay, sure. So 
So that's this will be the basis of my song. Okay. This will mean that if I'm going to show you some drum and bass loops, maybe it won't fit very well, but I, I'm going to try. Well, we, we have a request, actually, that people, some people do want to hear some of the trap loops as well. Oh, uh, okay. So maybe we can take a spin through, even if, if it's not the right vibe for what you just played, we can at least audition them. Yeah, so maybe we should just start with a loop on this. That's a good way to start, I think. I always start with a loop, and then in the end, I might actually remove the loop, but it helps you get started with the song. So in Loop Supply, you have a bunch of uh, Rex loops. It's actually a really good... That's really good. I'm going to make a quick tip out of that. Yeah. You've actually, that's something maybe Matisse just threw that by, but, but dwell on that for a second, everybody. You, some people go like, ah, oh, I don't use loops. It's like becomes a macho thing. You know, I don't, I don't touch loops. And other people love loops. I love loops. But then there's that middle ground that you can actually fill in for what you're doing. And then if you mm. want to pull it out and put in your own drums or whatever, you yeah. pull it out. And I think that's perfect. So I'm just going to try a couple of different drum loops on this. And you have different genres laid out here. And these are all often different tempos. So I'm just going to try something that I know is around 120 to start with. And let's maybe check out this one. All of these loops have uh, separate parts, most of them. So you have the full loop, and the full loop is all the elements. But then you also have loops that are just, it's part of this. So if I like the hat in this loop, the hi-hat was nice. I can just load just the hat part. Mm, yeah. And these are also laid out in Dr. Octorex patches where you have all the related loops in one Dr. Octorex patch. So for example, if I continue down here and get the one called Swing, for example. That's got, that's put them all across yeah. the top row there. And that's quite a good way to just find something you like. And combining different loops, I think, is one of the joys of this collection because there's so much. So you want to try them in different ways. Right. But let's see what tempo would we need to do some trap. We want to go up to like 140. And let's try some of the trap loops. Oops. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> works weirdly well, but <laughs> also not really. This I can get behind. Yeah, yeah. One of the things I've I've liked in these uh, trap loops, somewhere in there, and I think it's maybe more towards the bottom, mm. there's a lot of those um, pitched snare, up, up pitched and down pitched snare fills ah, okay. those little things where you just you hear them and you go how are they doing that yeah you know and i can just take the snare of this for example maybe that wasn't the best example of an uphill snare no no wait wait there are if you want to actually try and find them okay well, hang on a second let me take i'm gonna look at your screen for a second <laughs> he's looking at my screen i'm scared I can't remember where they are. They're in there, though. They're They're, in it, there. It, it, the name up. Actually, you know what? Maybe it would, uh, use the search function to actually mm -hmm. search for the word up, because up's in there. There's an up. Okay, that's more manageable. Okay, now. <laughs> oh, snare fill up. Yeah, there yeah, snare fill up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Okay, cool. So I'm going to use this drum beat as the bass. And let's add some snare fills. Yeah, those things. Now, you don't want that going every... Exactly. <laughs> but then you can trigger it when you want. Right. Which is a great way to combine. And there are a couple of those which are just, you know, you can make the rest of your drum pattern, but that just speeds it up. I think we lucked out and that this lovely drum loop actually is in the same key I played. Yeah. Not bad. <laughs> so those are some of the trap loops. And I mean, there are so many loops, I can't go through them all. But Of course, uh, yes. There are a bunch of slower loops too that I really like. So these ones are more 90 BPM loops, but I'm going to go to 100. Just it's nice and even. Okay, these have a lot of grit. Try something else. 
was really crushed. Mm, yeah. That's nice. Actually kind of works with the song. Right? Got that fat bass drum. Or fat yeah. snare drum. Not bad at all. However, I kind of... I want to sequence my own drums too. So I'm just going to search for Island, which is this patch name. And I'm going to just choose the top of this. Actually, maybe just even the hats. Here we go. So I can actually create some of my own drums. So I'm going to set up a redrum real quick. And check out some of the samples in the drum supply. So I really need a kick and a snare or maybe a clap. That's what I want. So there's a bunch here that I like. You know, there's a million variations on the 808. But there are some really nice kind of dry kicks Yeah, that I think are great. I'm just going to set up a pattern here and let it play. There's a question here. I just want to make sure I'm... We can, I think it's an easy answer. Eric Keller asks, does Reason work as an Isotope host? I believe, that, I believe he means as a VST host for Isotope plugins? Uh, if you mean that, then yes, definitely. Yes. <laughs> there are, yeah, you can run all the Isotope VSTs. Yeah. Let's check this out together with the loop. I like these kind of dry kicks. Let's try a couple more. That's actually quite nice too. There's a lot of oomph. Yeah. Okay, so let's set up a snare too. And I'm just gonna put in that sequence before and so when I try out different samples, I can hear it in context of the song. Let's just go somewhere in the middle. And <laughs> Stefan just commented, okay, now Matisse is gonna go through 25,500 <laughs> kick samples. <laughs> actually found one right away. Oh yeah, there you this go. This is great. I'm just going to keep it like this for now. Okay, yeah, but that's nice. It's a nice basis of a song. So let's try adding some more elements here. And I have my lovely folder, Matthias makes a song. <laughs> where I've tried some different things. And what I really like to do on this one is uh, to add a choir, but then affect it. So I'm going to use the Mercury patch I showed you before. Oh, there's a... Trevor just made a comment that uh, I think would warm the cackles of our hearts. Is that the right phrase? <laughs> Trevor says, I'm going to start making music more and DJ less. And nothing against DJing. I mean, DJ all you want too. But that's awesome. Yeah. To, to be watching this stream and to, and to be inspired to make more music, I think That's is, all we want in life. Yeah. We want you guys to make so much That's more really music. cool. Way to, way to go, Trevor. And can't wait to hear it. Yeah. So I'm just going to record the chords with this choir patch. And then I'm going to use synchronous to spice them up a bit. So let's record. That's pretty much what I was looking for. And I'm just going to copy this twice so it goes through the entire loop. Now, synchronous, we haven't talked about yet. We haven't. And there's requests to do it. Oh, but, well, I, but I figured we'd we come to it, so... <laughs> So synchronous is one of those devices that it's so hard to say exactly what it does because it does so much. <laughs> and this is, I mean, for, I've used it for a long time. I used it only to just do LFOs and not modulate anything. Right. And then I started exploring the patches. I went, oh, you're right. Oh, you can do, oh, okay. So let's show you just the basics. Of I this. find I use it often as a, the, just the world's quickest sidechain effect. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm, We're going to end up there, I'm sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it has three curves three channels of curves where you can draw in things like let's say a quarter note sine wave or you can mix and match and do hmm let's just change these steps and maybe do that maybe add a bit of a ramp so you can do really complex modulation curves really quickly and these curves what you really do with them is send them to things 
Sounds, sounds smart, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, send them the things. But right here we have a bunch of effects. So we have distortion, a filter, a delay, and a reverb, and the level. And for each of these controls, there's a tiny, tiny rotary here, which means that I can send this curve to this rotary. So let's use, use the filter as an example. I'm going to set up a, maybe a slightly better pattern here. There we go. Okay. It's going to be easy to hear. If I just play this choir patch then and solo it, right now it sounds the same. So I need to turn on the filter. Ah, classic low pass filter. Now it's quite low. You can almost not hear the sound. But when I turn up this modulation curve, you can hear the curve. Right. See what's going on? So it's a it's a graphical way to to do these. You know, some people might be familiar with doing this to basses and stuff. To yeah. the classic wobble bass. Exactly. It's a, a graphical way to do that. I mean, and a million other things. But yeah. that's what you've got going on here. And that was kind of just to show filter modulation. This can be used for simple things like just adding a vibrato to this choir. So instead, I'm going to send to the level. Maybe a quicker one here. It's just a slight vibrato. And you can, of course, use it more as a gate. Yeah. So I'm just going to do a quick gate pattern. Now, a question is coming in from uh, Billy Reynolds. He says, rewinding to last week, I guess this is something of a, of a throwback. He's curious if Synchronous' curves can be sent to Europa and Grain. You yeah. actually do modulation of those synths. Absolutely. You can just plug them in one of the CV inputs on the backside. There are four of them. And you can assign that curve to anything in Europa, really. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it becomes quite a cool way to actually, you know, you've got built-in envelopes in Grain and Europa sure. both. But if you want, or if you prefer working with yeah. the, the curves in... It's, it's a different way of working. It's a different way. It's and it like, produces a different result. Yeah, you're getting different ideas. Right. Here I just set up a super quick gate on these choir patterns, just so you can see what happens if you just use square waves. And of course, you can use all of these effects without modulating them. But really, it takes takes a while maybe to do the more, more exciting stuff in Synchronous. So let's check out some of the patches. And this is where I think you'll see people who worked hard <laughs> let's check out the one called breather you can see this is using all the curves so it's using the yellow one the pink one and the blue one which are all assigned to different things when you listen back oh flipping or is that nope. dis oh, distortion. distortion ah distortion in the patch it's a weird pumping breathing sound Let's try another one that's maybe a bit more effective on the vocals. That's nice. Yeah, this is really sweet. Suddenly you get this completely different sound. If I just open up the filter a bit. That could really be the basis of this song. Yeah. It works. I didn't plan it at all. <laughs> <laughs> of course, there are also some maybe more normal patches too. And like you said, one of my primary uses of synchronous nowadays is quick sidechain. Mm. And yes, it's not actually sidechain because there's mm. no other signal. Right. But it's a pump effect. Yeah, exactly. Super well, this is the thing, effect. you know, these days, sidechain, it's almost like... I don't know. It's a little. It's almost a pet peeve of mine that people refer to pumping as side chaining when side chaining <laughs> is something entirely different. Though you can make that effect with it's it. It's your audio engineering it's, education. I know. It, it's <laughs> the, 
I'm, I'm like, but but what about ducking and what about? And there's, there's a lot of uses for side chain, but um, it's absolutely probably the most common use these days. Yeah, absolutely, is to create that pumping sound and just dragging one of the presets. And this is how what I do every time. I just go, hmm, side chain, side chain preset, and I just play it and add it. Quick side chain, right? Super quick. Which my almost pe- too quick. Almost too quick. My pet peeves aside, that's way better than the old method of setting up a compressor and getting a kick drum and feeding the kick drum into the side yeah. chain and you know. Yeah. So this is it's quite great. And it, there's a couple of these presets. Long side chain. A bit longer. Short side chain. You guessed it. Shorter. <laughs> Super long side chain. Yep. Super long. Right. And so and just for people to realize, there's a dry wet knob as well. If you don't want it cutting all the way off but you want to just exactly. you can even, just mix this in here. you can mix in a little of the non-side chained yeah this might actually be quite good on this track Garrett asks what is it doing Garrett it's it's creating a volume pumping sound exactly it's it comes from uh, an, an older method of doing it where you would feed the kick drum signal into a compressor and the compressor was listening not to the thing it was compressing. It was listening to the kick drum. So that when the kick drum hit, the compressor turned down. And you, it kind of got out of the way for the kick drum. And it became a popular sound that, that your drums can hit really hard and kind of everything else in the song is like moving out of the way, turning down real quick and then coming back up. And mm. any time you've seen people at a, at a club bouncing like this to the music, <laughs> it's probably because they're reacting to the side chain. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and that's, uh, that's just, a few of the examples what synchronous can do. We, we've already done over one hour of this stream, so we can't dwell too long. No, no, okay. But There's, it can do so much. It does a lot. A and this lot. is another one, to, just to call back to something I was saying earlier, that you know, having synchronous as a device that patch design sound designers can count mm. on everybody having access to yeah. means that we can start seeing some really cool patches floating around and being exchanged and in refills and exactly. all that stuff. So uh, I'm just going to use the first patch we used here that was kind of that minimal... Because it doesn't take up a lot of space, but you get part of that vocal quality. Tweak it ever so slightly. There we go. It's a good groove so far. I'm then gonna use uh, one of those combinators I showed you with uh, Clang and Pangea to play a bit of a melody on top of this just to get something because i won't sing <laughs> i can't <laughs> sing I if, I, if i had a singer she or he would sing here but i'm gonna play a melody instead so i'm quickly gonna just try some ideas out and then when i get it i'm gonna hit record <laughs> Uh, something like that. It's even better. Okay, so let's record. Pretty okay. Yeah. A question came in from uh, David, which I actually don't know the answer to, but mm. I imagine the answer is sort of one of those, uh, you know, anything in reason is possible. I just may not know the solution. He asks, is it possible to make synchronous begin its curve loop when a key is held down, like sort of triggering off of a ah. key? Ooh. Is that possible? I'd like to believe that, like through, to some, believe that through some possible. clever way involving Thor, you know, you can... That like the if you see yeah, me out of Thor there, there using is, the there is a freeze mode where you freeze the entire waveform, and that can be controlled with CV. So you can probably set up it, a combinator. David, somehow. the answer is probably, <laughs> but, but really, it's not really meant for that. And no. since you're getting your open grain too, those are envelopes that have similar capabilities, right? And they're triggered on key down. Mm, so I see. there, you can just set it up and route that envelope out of Europa into whatever you want to control. Gotcha. Yep. So this is getting to be a bit of a song at least. What it's missing is, you know, you shouldn't go right away and just go, okay, there's the song, bye. 
<laughs> you should have some kind of intro, maybe. So I'm quickly going to set up an intro part and play some Radical Piano. There we go. So now the main part, it's over here. And I'm going to try to play something over here. So I have a piano patch that I really, really like. And that's the Mellow Upright. Mm. Just because it's, it's such a kind of a soft, nice piano. And it really kind of, it's great for an intro. Here it doesn't have a lot of attack. Yeah. I'm just going to play some stuff in the beginning. Just leave the kick and snare there. Just to have something to uh, actually keep time with. I don't want to listen to the click anymore. I want to listen to the beat. So let's see if I can come up with something. Not the worst. I've no. done better. <laughs> but it's pretty okay. Not not bad. For a one take wonder. One take wonder. And now let's take away these drums from the intro. <laughs> I'm just gonna have this. <laughs> Sorry, someone is now you can name the song Matthias's Massive Handsome Hands. <laughs> <laughs> this is becoming a thing that I'm not sure if I'm comfortable with it. <laughs> So now we're getting a piano intro, and I want to add some of our old favorites too. So if you've seen the last two streams, and I surely hope you have because they're awesome, I'm going to use a green patch. Cool. I quite like. Cool. This one's called Mood Board. I might have shown it before, but it's it's got a kind of an organ-like character. And I think that would be great underneath the piano for the intro. Just kind mm. of a soft, sweeping sound. Cool. Let's try it out. Really pretty texture, yeah. Yeah, it, it just kind of works because I also played it a bit sloppily and <laughs> on purpose. Because then when that beat comes in and it's quite stiff, mm. then you have this kind of nice part that's the kind of contrast. all over the place. Yeah. Michael says, by the way, that he thinks that uh, you and I should be included in the update package. <laughs> if, uh, if we can figure out a way to fit in the box. Yeah, we do it. We'll do that. Now you can hear we have this kind of nice intro and then comes beat and this is missing the low end you kind of miss it from the organ and piano sound so i'm mm. also gonna use guess europa ah to get a quick bass sound going cool yeah somebody had asked no bass i can't make music without bass <laughs> But I must admit, I almost never start with bass. Mm, interesting. Um, I have heard most people start with drums and bass. I tend to start with kind of melodies and chords and then come in and do the, mm. do the bass. So here is a bass I quite like. And it's, it's, you know, it's short. And one thing you forget about basses is that sometimes they're good if less is more. So I'm just going to take down, actually, the filter slightly. Hmm. It gets this short sound, and I'm gonna play that underneath the chorus. So let's record. Now you have kind of two different rhythms going in the drums and in the rest of the song. Right. And now if I were to make this a proper, really nice production, I would probably have some kind of sweep and stuff into the sure. chorus. There's a lot where this could go. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the only final thing I want to do is maybe add some more drums 
when we actually get into it because maybe missing a bit of bite so i'll sneak in a loop i've used before it's also from the loop supply and just make it play here There you go. It's a good little top end addition. Yeah, it with a little, a little crisps it up a bit. Yeah, a little, little grit on the on both the the hats and the snare. exactly. Yeah. So this is kind of just to show you how all these different things in recent ten combine them. That's what I'm trying to say to you guys. You know, <laughs> there's so much stuff, and you, you go, "Oh, I'm gonna just play with Europa for two years," and you might, but just combine them and start making songs. That's why we make Reason. We make Reason so you can make a bunch of music that you really like. Or Absolutely. don't like and make more that you do like. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, it's it's true. It's true. Yeah. So I think um, that's been, I mean, I would say it's been a quick walkthrough. It's actually been an hour and 20 minutes that we've yeah. been going through and showing people. Quick in stream time. <laughs> quick in stream time. That's right. <laughs> um, but... Um, it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. If you guys have any last questions, throw them out in here. I'm going to throw one at you that I saw, um, if we could, just for the sake of auditioning. Mm -hmm. A couple people were curious to hear uh, some drum and bass loops from okay. the loop Absolutely. selection. So. Let's check them out. So let's go to loop supply and drum and bass. And maybe it's a good idea that I set up a song that's 174. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's drum and bass. So this is going to be slightly easier. And we go to loops, drum and bass, and try some stuff out. I just used a couple of these today. They're really good. Yeah. Yeah. I like this halftime. Let's try another one. That's such a tight snare. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I'm, 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 I'm virtually in my mind reaching for my super saw sound yeah. and <laughs> wanted to get, get going with it. This is a nice basic one, I think. When the, you know the kick and snare is not doing so much, so you can program a bunch of cool patterns along with this. Mm, right, right. And then especially if you take just the bases, and then you can start combining. So yeah, let's do this, but take the top from something else. Maybe a top from something else. You're starting to build your own loop selections here. Yeah, yeah. Cool. That's cool. Yeah, so there you go. So people, so those that were asking for drum and bass uh, stuff, there's some really cool stuff. And there's, I mean, a, a lot of genres. There's really cool stuff. And it's got this neat... Um, like, there's this experience I've had when I'll go into one of those folders... And I find myself very quickly going, yeah, that'll that'll do. That's the one, you know. Yeah. And um, you sort of have this concept in your head of of what you want. Uh, and if you're not a drummer, you don't know how to quite articulate that. And you mm. go through auditioning a couple. You go, oh yeah, yeah, that that that's what I couldn't say I exactly. wanted, but that's what I wanted. So yeah, and it's really, uh, you know, it's it's good to have all those tools available. I think it's one of those things where, yeah, you might not use loops all the time, but just kind of listening to it and checking it out and hearing the different parts you can learn how to make those loops that's true that's true someone in the comments asked me to drop the song to Ali Hoopa uh huh so I just did okay here it is and Stefan you'll get the honor of copying this link <laughs> without using copy paste it's one of the biggest challenges in our modern society oh oh right yeah 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 or you can just go to my profile that's true Matthias H -G. <laughs> write that down Stefan uh, yeah so yeah we can post the um the stream song, uh, yeah. what we've done. So you guys can uh, go on to Ali Hoopan. You can uh, open up and reason, build off it, continue and remix it, do whatever yeah. you want with it. Um, well, why don't you, Matthias... You can make it way better, I'm sure. <laughs> we set us up with a loop and we'll play us out with uh, the... Let's go. With the song. And um, I'll take I'll take my chance while Matthias is getting that set up to thank everyone for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in for all three of these streams. We have had fun with you guys as we always do. 
And every time we do more streams, we come away saying we got to do even more. So that'll surely be happening. But thanks for tuning in. I hope through the course of these three streams, you've gotten a sense of Reason 10. And I hope you're going to get a better sense of it when you get your hands on it yourself, yep. which is October 25th. 25th. Uh, we could have so, synchronized that way better. Oh, we really should have. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Next but time. Um, yeah, October 25th, Reason comes out. Uh, you can still sign up for the beta. They're still letting people into the beta as they can handle the... You know the influx of, of testers. There's more testers is more for them to handle as well. Yeah. But um, they're bringing people in. You can still sign up for the beta. If you haven't uh, upgraded uh, to Reason uh, Nine yet, uh, you can upgrade to Reason Nine today, and you'll get a free upgrade to Reason Ten yep. when it comes out. So if just you, show up in your account, and you'll be ready to. Come. If you wanted to get your hands on, you know, things like players or whatever it might be new to you uh, in. In whatever version you're coming from, you know, I mean, some of the audio slicing and pitch edit and all the mm. things that are, are new uh, to Reason in Reason 9, you can get your hands on that already and start get your head around it and then get the new stuff when 10 comes out. Yep. So, as always, it's been a blast. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And uh, we're going to see you again soon for some form of some kind of stream. I'm sure we will. How's that for a plan? <laughs> it's a good plan. Okay. We'll see you guys. Take Bye. care. Bye.